Lake River site. Uh, as I told you earlier, my name is Kofi, and I'll be taking you through the tour. Ascent Manso is one community that played an important role during the trans Atlantic slave trade. It was documented by many, many historians. We have our very own professor of history in the person of Akusia Aduma Pebi in a book entitled The Indigenous Slavery in Ghana from the 16th century to the 19th century. Likewise, our very own professor J.E. Akwanda also made documented it in his book, The Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade from the 16th century to the 19th century. Likewise, one British historian in the person of W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. All these historians made the claim that Asen Manso indeed was the biggest slave market during the trans-Atlantic slave trade. Two markets played the most important role. We have Salaga market at the northern part of Ghana, which serves as the second largest slave market, and a St. Manso slave market here, which is closer to the Cape Coast dungeons. So, the Portuguese arrived in the Gold Coast. Uh, in 1871 was when the Portuguese arrived in Gold Coast, recently called Ghana. When they came in, we were having some form of slavery that Ghanaians were practicing. People call it all, of, all sorts of names, like the endangered type of slavery, slavery with privileges, uh, an employer-employee relationship. But because it's as the word slave, so I cannot justify it because every slave, slavery, it is slavery. So when the Portuguese came in here, and they saw to it how our people were harmoniously working, how communal they were, and how they were using their strength to develop their communities and countries. Then one Portuguese priest in the person of Bartolomeu de la Casas, he was the proponent of the trans-Atlantic slave trade. In 1492, when the New World was discovered, Indians, white Indians, were the ones that were working on such plantations. Those Indians were not as stronger as we. So he said, then why don't we use these people rather to work on the plantations in the Americans and the Caribbeans? So that brought about the triangular slave trade. Our chiefs also argued that for them, they felt that the kind of slavery that were practiced was somebody who have all the privileges that he could think of. You have the chance to make a family. You have the opportunity to live free life. You just have to work and get paid and take care of your family. But they didn't know that there is another horrific aspect of the trade which our brothers and sisters were taken to. Now, in the discourse of, of, of the trade, captives that were captured from the upper borders of the country, like some parts of Burkina Faso, some parts of Ivory Coast, and some selected parts in the northern parts of Ghana, those that were captured were put in back into their chains and shackles, and they were made to walk to the Salaga market at the north. It was in the Salaga market that they were given the first opportunity to rest. Small food is given to them and small water is given to them to drink. Because they knew the journey from Salaga to Ascent Manso in here is going to be a tough one for our ancestors. So after, the, after feeding them, the journey starts. They were made to walk in chains and shackles barefooted and half-naked through the thick and dense forest from the Salaga market to Asin Manso in here 
which was 300 miles by foot. But during that journey, because our forebears were marching through the forest beds of the country, majority of our brothers and sisters were exposed to many dangers while marching us from the north down to Asen Manso. Some of us were beaten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered punishment and cruelty from the slave raiders. So according to oral history, majority of our brothers and sisters who are making the journey from Salaga to Asen Manso lost their lives along the way. One of their biggest challenge was crossing the Pra River. When you're going to Kumasi from here, you're going to see the river on the way, the Pra River. When I was reading about the trade and I got to the Pra River, I became excited because when I, I saw the, the name of the, of the river in the books, I said to myself, at least our forebearers could at least fetch some of the water to drink because definitely they might be thirsty. Also, they could fetch some of, of, the, of the water and sprinkle it around themselves so that they could gain their energy back. But when I read further, it was so painful. That river was a death trap for our forebears. Those of, that was where the first sorting out took place. Those of our brothers and sisters who were weak and couldn't continue with the trade. When they got to the river, they were brought out of their chains and their shackles and they were dumped in that river to die. Few survived, but majority of us died in that river. So every 31st day of July, we always go to that river at night to observe a vigil and mourn our ancestors. Because the following day is a day that Ghana as a nation will celebrate our Emancipation Festival. So when they landed here at Asen Manso, this was the place that they were sorted out again according to age and sex. In determine your age, a device called a speculum oris is put into your mouth, open your mouth, count your teeth, thereby forecasting your ages. Broken bottles was what was used in shaving our brothers and sisters just for them to look attractive. Leaves from a bamboo tree which were very itchy, was what was used to bathe them in the river. After that, those of our brothers and sisters who survived this were put back into their chains and shackles and they were made to walk straight to the Cape Coast Dungeons, which was 35 miles from here, because that was where the slave ship was being docked. But those of our forebears who couldn't make it who couldn't make it and who rebelled in any way that they could. They were killed and buried along the river bank, which will be going there later. But note, wherever you were captured during the trade, it was a match of no return. You're going, you don't even know where your, where your family is. You don't even know where your children are. You don't even know what is ahead of you. They were taken through one particular door at the dungeon with the inscription, the door of no return. Immediately you step right in front of the door and you look right in front of you. You see the ocean. Mind you, you saw the small river Pra and your brothers and sisters were dumped in to die. How much more the ocean? It was a journey full of uncertainties. We only resorted to the word, to the word, it shall be war one day. Our hopes 
aspiration and everything died in us. But that door of no return that we all pass through, it is never a door to serve our interests as Africans. Because the words on that door, it's so stronger depending on how spiritually connected you are. Because with the door of no return, they believed, if I say they, I'm sure you know, they believed and they were certain that we are never ever going to make it alive to come back and tell the story as it is. That was why they started by first taking our names off, forcing us to stop speaking our languages. They knew when we are able to speak our languages, we could rebel. So they divided us in different segments so that when you speak to this, this woman could never understand your language. So that in other way, they could impose their language on us. But look at us, and we are still here, we have still survived, Amen. and we have returned back to that same door of no return that they thought would never come back to. Mm. The second reason why that door is not there to serve our interests is because with the door of no return, they believe that our culture and traditions as Africans will be clean forever. Our tradition will be dead. That was what they're thinking. But one thing that they didn't know is that we Africans are genetically coded. So in diverse ways, we portray our culture. I had a group and I started pouring libation. I guess you all know what libation is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he asked me, Kofi, what are you doing? Then I told him, you don't need to ask me what I'm doing. You should know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It was like, I don't know. Then I said, I said, wait a minute. Back there in the state, you go to the club, you buy yourself a drink, and you say to my homie, you pour it on the ground. Indirectly, you are already communicating with your ancestors. But it's just that you have to come back to your roots so that you could connect those pieces and understand it better. They also, the most important thing is, they believe that we Africans, are going to be eliminated forever from this earth. Mm -hmm. Even in the biblical concept, when you read the Bible, for me, I don't read the Bible as, uh, as a religion too. For me, I see ourselves in the Bible. Absolutely. Everything written in there is about you. That's right. Just sit down, meditate and read upon it. That's right. And you will know that everything, the truth and everything is in the Bible. When you read Numbers chapter six, it was telling you about, about we being the chosen people. Sometimes yeah. I always tell them about we being the chosen people. Look at it. You see my brother in here? We have one thing. We have mm -hmm. our hair, which is wool. Mm -hmm. They have their hair to be silk. So it is easy for me to lock. Mm -hmm. But for them, mm -hmm. it's not. That's right. Okay. When you read Revelation, God wanted to tell you something about himself. He appeared to people in Revelation. You know what he said? He has a white air like a white wool. So our spirituality is coming from Jesus, and Jesus Christ is one of our ancestors, and it's never a white person. That's right. Because when you read Numbers chapter 6, verse 1, you're going to get it that Jesus Christ is never a white person. He is a black person like us. Now, the power of the wool transcends to one man in the same Bible called King Solomon. Solomon has all the wisdom in the world. But who is Solomon? Was Solomon one of us? Or Solomon was one of them? One of us. So when you read Solomon chapter 5, verse 6, Solomon was given a direct description of himself. Do you know what he said? He said, I have a black bushy hair uh, with locks. So as Africans, our wisdom and intelligence comes from Solomon because we are the direct descendants of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about our strength. We've been able to endure all difficulties. 
all discrimination, all racism, and everything you could think of. But have you ever asked yourself, why are we so strong to overcome all this oppression? The reason is simple. You could find that same thing in the Bible. The Bible talks about one man who has all the strength in the world. And the name was Samson. Samson has something in common with us. Seven locks. So that door of no return has outlived its purpose. And it's our duty as Africans to erase that mentality, that worse, on the doors of no return to the door of return. Because today, we made the journey of a lifetime. Mm, yes. But the question is, how do we change that writings on the walls of the dungeons from the door of no return to the door of return? Mm, yeah. But I'm going, to, I'm going to be the one to answer this. That is why you could see in our ancestral graveyard, we have the mortal remains of our two great ancestors. First, Madame Crystal from Kingston, Jamaica. In the middle, Samuel Carson from New York, US of A. Madame Crystal was a young, beautiful lady who was captured but landed up in Jamaica as an enslaved African. While she was in prison, she saw all things that happened to us. People being killed, women being ripped left, right, and center. The atrocities and the pain was so much for this lady to contain because she was a mother. She couldn't bear all these pains. So she decided, what can I do? I wish I could do something, but I'm, I'm also in chains and shackles. So what can I do in order for my voice to be heard, in order to push for this thing to stop? So this lady, while she was in prison, she decided to starve herself to death. Mm. But it's never an easy thing to do during that era because you were seen as an asset. So you were forced to feed. By doing so, your teeth is chiseled. They chisel everything and they make sure all this is off with your mouth full of blood. And they always force you to feed. But this lady, despite all those pain, she rebelled. She went through all the torture and punishments until she couldn't stand it any longer, until she lost her life. We have the descendants visiting every 27th just to pour libation and say to our ancestor, Medase, which means thank you. In the middle, Samuel Carson, he was the first African-American to rise to the highest rank in the US Navy. He died at the age of 35 years, but he wasn't given a befitting burial. There is one story about Samuel Carson that led the US to not have given our, our brother back to us. Because when we were going to excavate the mortal remains, something strange happened. When they got to the military, military uh, cemetery, they realized Samuel Cousin was buried at different parts of the cemetery. It's not even in the cemetery. It was outside the cemetery. So which means even in death, he was discriminated. So we took our own and we brought them back to their roots. So the two came together, landed at the Kutuka International Airport by boat through the, Cape Coast, through, through the Atlantic Ocean, to the Cape Coast dungeons, passing through other channels in the dungeon and coming out of the door of no return mm. and changing into the door of return on the 31st day of July, 1998. The same day, they were brought in here at Asen Manso. Asen means travelers, and Manso means the capital. So research has it that majority of us that formed this community were some of the captives who managed to escape. But because we didn't know how to return to where we were captured, we formed part of this community. So we don't celebrate any other festival apart from the mass patient festival. So when we brought them in here, everybody was in black and red to mourn them. The following day, being the 1st of August, 
these two of our great were buried here. So this before informed our decision as a nation to celebrate the Emancipation Festival. The third tomb was brought in here recently during the year of return celebration by the Prime Minister of Barbados, Her Excellency Mia Amomotli. She said it was mortal remains that were picked from all slave cemetery they could find in Barbados. Every bones that they had, they brought all together just for our ancestors to have a befitting burial right from where it all started. We would have loved to have the mortal remains of all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora being buried here. But just imagine, the place is too small to accommodate all of us. So this land has been reserved for those of our brothers and sisters who have their bodies cremated so they will have their ashes sprinkled on this land. So we do have hundreds of our brothers and sisters who have had their ashes on this land. So that is why to go in this land, we never do so with our shoes on. That is why you remember that to do So before you go in there, you pay your respect with your shoes off because you are walking on the mortal remains of some of our ancestors in the diaspora. Now the trade itself was abolished uh, in 1807, took effect in 1808 for the abolishment of the trade, but for me, not slavery. Slavery in the US of A, you have yours to be 1865, Brazil have yours to be 1888 and other rest, but I don't like quoting those dates because I don't believe that slavery has been abolished. I really believe it has rather evolved or changed mm -hmm. into a new thing that this world is experiencing. So until when we all agree that indeed slavery has been abolished, that is when I, Kofi, I can boldly say it has been abolished. But for now, no. I'll be taking you to one beautiful plant. The name of the plant is the mimosa plant. Don't get excited, so a drink. In here, it's a plant. That plant played a marvelous role during the trade. I'm going to take you to that plant, and I'm going to tell you the role that plant played in our history. Whenever you have questions, you feel free. You ask as many questions as you love to ask. So first, we'll be going to the uh, plant. Then after the plant, I will tell you something about the war. So if you don't mind, I will speak three. I will say yen ko. Yes, yen, as in the currency of Chinese, yen. yen. Then you add ko to it, so yen ko. It means let's go. So yen ko. Abo! Amen. I don't, I don't, I don't like the energy. I don't like the energy. Abo! Amen. Amen. Yes, it's 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 a beautiful thing that we hear. It's a beautiful thing that we hear. Now, this erected walls uh, is called it's called the Memorial Wall of Return. As Africans as we are, names are very very integral part of us. We don't just name because we felt your face look like that. Or we don't just name because we feel your stature looks like that. Before your name is given to you, you needed to consult the seer 
to tell you about who you are and who you're going to be tomorrow. So that when your name is given to you, it should be aligned with who you become tomorrow. There are some names that no one could temper with. And those names are the soul names. So which means when you're born on Monday, automatically you have a name. When you're born on Tuesday, automatically you have a day, just like we have Ikria, Amma, Akusia, and the rest. But we, we believe that we have chalked so many successes as Africans living in the diaspora. The word slave is no more a tag on us. Nobody could look at you and call you slave in the physical realms. But sometimes I do say, in the spiritual realms we are. And someone asked me, Kofi, why are you saying that? Then I said, the only, the one thing, the first thing that could liberate us from slavery is our names. Because when they see you at the grocery shop, they call you by their names and you, and you return back to them. They call you Brooks and you respond. They call you James, you respond. They call you Phillips, you respond. They call you Cain, you respond. So it's like, indirectly, they still have you as their slaves. But today, we try to let them know that now those names doesn't exist any longer with us. So when they see you at the broken shop, at grocery shop, and they call you Brooks, you're not Brooks because your name is now Kofi. So now we try to tell them that if you see me at the grocery shop, please, can you call me Kofi? Can you call me Yao? Can you call me Akosia? Can you call me Efia? And with that alone, if we are able to champion that, that is the first defeat. That's the first important victory that we've achieved on them. So this was, is when sometimes you, we give you the opportunity to leave some of your slave's name in here so that you could take your original name, add it to it, and you live with it. So this memorial wall of return, as you can see, writing on this goes for three important things. First, it's your philanthropic works that you are indirectly doing to help the community. And secondly, it is a spiritual connection that on every emancipation day, uh, the priests mention names and pray for their health and survival. Philanthropic because we have a lot of schools and it's a, we are in a deprived state community, so we use that to buy and support some of the schools. So to write your name on this wall, it is not binding on you. But it goes for a line like this. It goes for a hundred Ghana cities, which is equivalent to almost twenty dollars, and you have your name written on this wall. So this wall of no memorial wall of return is to sometimes leave your slave name behind for your ancestors to deal with it. Now, as I said earlier, I promise you of the mimosa plant. I'm going to take you to the mimosa plant, and after the mimosa plant, we're going to do something. But the thing that we're going to do is not binding. But I'll tell you, and if you want to do, you do it. But if you don't, we'll talk about it later. So please let's get to the Musa plant. You don't have to use the glass? No, it's worth it. I did. Oh, good. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So. I'm, I just want to make it quicker, quicker, so that you go. Okay, sir. You see, during the trade, some of our brothers and sisters, our own flesh, some participated in the, in the, in the trade. But majority of us also were against the trade. But those that were against the trade, they weren't having the best of weapons as compared to the raiders. So, in an attempt to save their people, they were equally targeted and killed. 
So to avoid them from being captured, they started mapping up strategies in order to save themselves, their families, and their communities. So when you go to Gulu in the northern part of Ghana, you had people building defense walls around their communities with the tiny holes in it, all prevent, to prevent, with gas all over it, all in the attempt of preventing intruders from getting to them. Another group moved to the mountainous areas. So when they see the raiders coming through the valley, they roll stones at them so they don't get to them at the top. But other group were in the caves. But those that were in the caves, it was getting really difficult for them to come out. So those that were in the cave resorted to the planting of the mimosa plant. Because it is that plant that showed them whether it is safer or not. Mm. So whenever they wanted to come out, this is the mimosa plant. Please, let's come closer. Whenever they wanted to come out, the sign should be like this. The plants should be as we are seeing all over. So it grows very high. So when they see it like this, they suspect it is safer. Nobody has come around. So you can come out and do all that you want to do. But please, come closer. I want you to do something for me. I want you to touch. Yeah. If, you, you know that plant. You know it, right? I've seen it on YouTube. Yes. So immediately you touch that plant. Oh, yes. Please come closer, come closer. Let's just touch it. Yes, everybody touch. Yeah. I've never been here before, but I know the reaction. Yes. Oh, it's funny when you do what you say. Oh, look at that. I've never seen anything like it. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, so, basically, it shouldn't be surprising because I told you about our intelligence as Africans. What is the name of that? The mimosa plant. Mimosa? Yes. Oh. So you, you would always remember because you have a drink in the U.S. called the mimosa oh, yeah. plant. Yeah, it's no, the flower that I used for Wow. wow. It's oh. And, it like it? and it's... Sorry. <laughs> so whenever it is like this, all over at where it is planted, then they suspect there's movement around. Mm. So nobody comes out. So this mimosa plant saved a lot of our brothers mm. and sisters. Mm. I have changed the name from mimosa to destiny plant. Mm. Because this plant is following us wherever we go as Africans. Every part of the Caribbean have it. They call it Shemo Lady. Mm -hmm. When you go to some part of the US of A, they also have some of this plant. Mm -hmm. So I always Mama. ask this for question or this soft question. Would we ever be, think our ancestors will leave us without giving us traces of where we're coming from? Mm. So wherever you see this plant, it's telling you who you are, where you're coming from, and the time is right for you to come back to your roots. Amen. So this is what we must have plant played those beautiful roles in our lives. Now we've got to make our journey to the river. And I call it the triumphant journey to the river. Uh -huh. And we're working on a path called the ancestral route. The ancestral route, because this path, as you've seen there, was developed by the feet of our ancestors. When the time comes for our ancestors to be kept clean, they were meant to walk through this path to the river. So all our ancestors that settled in the slave camp passed through this land. So we call the place the ancestral route. Most often at times, I don't want the sun to be kissing me because we're wearing black, black, so let's get to the shade. Now, I said earlier that our coming here it's more spiritual than we could think of. This particular stretch of land is one particular uh, path that have enlightened me, that have given me many revelations, and that has connected me to my source. Most often at times, whilst going through this path, we do so with our shoes off. 
it is not binding on you to do but i'm going to tell you the reasons why we go through this path with our shoes off for me kofi i always say that our ancestors have been so good to us our ancestors fought just for you and i to live if it wasn't for them i wouldn't know where you all will be it is at the back of our ancestors that today we are alive and we see ourselves as their descendants and brothers and sisters we've done them so much wrong we've been able we've been made to even believe that mention the names of our ancestors are seen we've left our ancestors to the world for people to rather tell us about the white history of our own black people. When last did we sit as Africans or Africans living in the diaspora to sit our children down and tell them about the black history of Malcolm X, the black history of Suzuna Truth, the black history of Ariel Tubman, and the black history of so many men and women that fought for us. Our ancestors are so much sad that we've left them to this fate. But maybe, maybe we, we, we know of it, maybe we don't. So with this work, we try to tell them, we are still their children. They should forgive us. So that one more time, we will try to make things right. The second reason why we go with our shoes off is because of a covenant that you are here to fulfill. The land is your land. But just because of circumstances, that is why we are not together. Today, destiny has brought you home. The land needs to know you. The endurance, the strength, the peace, and the energy that our ancestors had. Whilst working on this same land, we pray that those traits, those traits should be embedded in us as well. The third reason is just an experience. So that when you see your brother or your sister, you tell them how privileged it was for you to have an ancestor like that. The last one is a reflection and connection <laughs> with the spirit of your ancestors. Whilst we go in, we reflect and we connect the past, connect the present, and we link it with the future. And we walk on the same trail and we say to them, Medase. Because we thank you for all that you've done for us. So this is the reasons why most often at times we go through with our shoes off. If I had known earlier, we would have gone through some ritual cleansing before even going through uh, the gate. But uh, it's my man, so we'll be talking about it the next. Uh, we'll be talking about it the next time, so we could plan and plan uh, effectively. So we're basically going to uh, the river. Uh, for me, uh, with all the things that I had whenever I visit and I pass through this street, for me, I always take my shoes off. But don't look at me. Do what your heart pleases you to do as we make the journey. It's just uh, about a minute and a half walk. It's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just closer. And whilst we are going, please, this is where we don't talk. We just try to connect. And we just try to say thank you to our ancestors. That's all. Thank you. Perfect. Good. So lead the way and. Oh, leave our shoes here? Yeah, it's safe right here. And it's just all up to you, uh, me personally. I don't know where the next hospital is, so I don't want to get nothing stuck in my foot. Right. That's one of those terrible jokes, but uh, yes, family, be comfortable. And this is the grounds we're walking on. So if you can make it with no shoes, it is all good. If you can't, it is also all good. Mohammed couldn't hold any of these. Unbelievable. When you have this in recording, you're covering up the brand.
Not perfect. So family now we're at the ancestral river park and it's a short trail and we continue on to, to this full presentation. Try to walk at the pace so that she could go. Yeah, uh, give Corbin a little bag. If you can, can you hold those bags for us? We're trying to take pictures with the shirts on. You know, that way all the photos we take and videos we take, the shirt look clean. Thank you. Uh, since you don't have a shirt on, we don't have to worry about you being in the picture of the videos. <laughs> there you go, rock on. All right, so we're rocking out Africa for the Africans, red, black, green, and gold t-shirts. This is our best you know, design yet. See family, wherever we are in Ghana, it is always green, plush, and beautiful. And we're taking a peaceful moment of silence as we walk to the Ancestral River Park. And this is the full presentation of Ascent Manso Old Slave Market for stolen African ancestors. When literally family, literally brought here, washed up, and sent off to the African Holocaust dungeons. And the popular ones at that time was Cape Coast and Elmina, right by where we were earlier. So this is that magical walk.
And here we are. Yes. There we go, and I, I guess it would be nice to clear the bushes around the sign. And you could be right near yard family and then you just have food going all over the place look at this isn't this beautiful Say welcome to Slave River. Okay, so uh, we've been, we were, we just uh, at, the, at, at the riverside. see the woman walking I said wow this 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 woman is strong mm -hmm. really really strong mm -hmm. I'll go All right. mm -hmm. yeah we we're waiting we're waiting for you uh, have you been to the coast? Mm -hmm. So you're going to Kumasi? Yeah, we're on our way to Kumasi. Yes. Yes. It's uh, hard to think about the time, so let's... Kumasi is a little bit far from the world, so... This is Elmina. Elmina? Are we in Elmina? No, you are in the, you are in the central region, Asen Manso. Asen Manso. Yes, yeah, so now you are moving to the Ashanti region. Okay. Yeah, and a little bit far no. from here. So. Yeah, so... You'll be seeing the Pra River that I told you about on the way. Okay, Abu. Amen. Abu. Amen. Uh, we're basically going to the to the river, but we'll be going in a straight line, which with each other's right hand on each other's shoulder. I'll be leading. The pace that I go, if you cannot cope with that pace, just drop your hand. Those who could go with me, you can go with me. But if the pace is too much for you, just drop your hand. When we get to the river, we'll talk about why we did this. So, we did it. Yes. Right hand. Your right, right hand. Right hand. Right hand on your left shoulder. Yes. Oh. Right hand on your left shoulder. Right hand.
Okay, so, so basically when I was coming here, <sighs> why did you think we did this? Repeat that. Why did we come with our hands? Yeah. Why do you think we did it? Which one? The, 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 to, ex to experience the coffin line. To experience the shackle. Mm -hmm. Wow. You see, this thing I dreamt of it. And I asked myself this question. When I increase my peace, and you cannot cope with my peace, you mm -hmm. drop your hands. But our ancestors were in chains and shackles. Mm -hmm. Even if they couldn't cope, they have to, by all means, try to cope. People got their hands cut off mm -hmm. because the chains were so fixed and tight on them. Mm -hmm. People couldn't go further, so they were just crawling and they were just pushing them on the ground. Mm -hmm. And those people were seen as ones that were not strong enough to continue the trade. The question is, how do you determine if somebody is, is, is stronger or not? The, the ones that make it. This continues with the dream that I had about us as Africans. I was walking along the beach and I met seven men roped in white, with gray hair all over there. As I passed by, one man shouted my name, Kofi, please come back. I went back, and I just did like this, to show respect. And I asked him, why am I here? One asked me a question that I wasn't able to answer. He asked me this question. Kofi, I am your ancestor. I've been through the trade. I've seen it, but you have not. What do you think that we were trying to overcome all these years? I was like, I don't know. And the second one answered. He said, we are fighting for the chains and shackles to be off us. Because the chain is the only strength that the whites or the Europeans have over us. So they knew it was the strength of the white man. So they never know rest. They fought to the chains and shackles were off their feet and off their hands. When they had the chains and shackles, they took the chains and shackles to themselves because now they have the power of the white man also in addition to the numerous one that we had. So they became so, so much powerful. But how many years do they have to live? They have to go and have a peaceful rest. But they were so much in love with us, as us being their kids. So they handed over that power to us. This is yours. This is yours. This is yours. We fought a good fight. Now we've given it to you to continue with the fight. We sang their praises. We mentioned their names. We celebrated them. We thanked them. We called them our heroes. Every day, their name were on our lips. Few years along the line, we totally forgot about them. We were even made to believe that mentioning their names is sinful. We don't even tell our brothers and sisters any longer about the rules that they play to us. And we call something civilization because we thought we've known it all. 
the chains and shackles that they left to us, we took that same chains and shackles to the white man. And we told them, can you open up our earth into two? They said, yes, because of civilization, we can do it. They opened our heads and we gave them the chains. And we told them they should chain our brains with the chains. They chained our brains with it and they stitched it together. And today, we have moved from slavery in chains and shackles to mental slavery. If you were one of our ancestors, would you have forgiven us or forgiven me for all the pains that we've caused you? No. no. But look at us. We are here today to tell them they should forgive us because we are still their children. So if we want them to forgive us, the big question is, why can't we forgive ourselves first? Amen. Because when we are able to forgive ourselves, in unity, we could go to them. And every power there is, they would impart on us for us to reclaim our victory. This particular place is where merchants came in to select the best of our people. Because it is a bamboo dominated area, the bamboos were used by the raiders as their camps. So when they bring their captives, they chain them around the bamboo trees, waiting for your turn to take your last bath before you go through the auctioning and the branding. Now, let's get closer to the river. This river that we are seeing now is a very big river. But because we are experiencing lesser rainfall as a country, that is why it is like this. But during the rainy season, it comes all the way up and you can't even get closer. But these rivers are two separate rivers, they are not the same river. They are two separate rivers, they are not the same river. When you observe, this river that flows through this direction is called Amma Emisa. Amma because she's a goddess born on Saturday. This same river is getting its source from the Pra River. The same river we were dumped in to die, that is when this one is getting its source from. We have this river here also to be Nonko in Sio. Nonko means slave. In Sio means river, the slave river, which is getting its source from the township. Now they were made to wash themselves in the slave river, but not in the river, and it's during the rainy season. Because during the rainy season, it is so much, it's, it, it's, it flows so high that with this part, you cannot even cross because of the waves. The current is so much stronger that you can't even cross. But with this area, it is always stagnant and you can cross as, as at when you love to cross. So in the badges of tents, still in chains and shackles, they push them down in there to wash themselves. Whereas the raiders will be on top with their guns pointed. Every opportunity that we had, just the smallest of opportunity, we try to escape. Mm -hmm. Every journey, we, every walk of the journey, we rebel against everything. So majority of us were killed and they call us rebellious, but those that were killed were all freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. Putting you in the, in the water, they cut the bamboo tree, the smallest part of it, split it like this, it looks like a brush. And they use that to scrub them while they are in the river. After scrubbing them, you realize that almost they have cut all over their body with blood. It is that point in time that our complexion changes to red, because we see blood all over us. The, the reason why they loved seeing the blood on us is for them to determine how strong we are. Because they know the more we lose his blood, the more weaker we become. So after that session, they drag them from the river and their feet develop this footpath to where we are now. They take you through vigorous exercises. 
like push up jumps and other exercises that I couldn't even think about all in the name of think, uh, seeing you stronger so after that those that were able to go through the first and second stages very strong they pass to the next stage that is the auction stage but those that couldn't make it they were just eliminated and just dumped somewhere here too to, to uh, for the sun to bury them so all these ones that you are seeing are graveyards of our ancestors and we call the place the bamboo cemetery so in 2006 we had people that excavated, excavated this uh, uh, land from the University of Cape Coast Archaeology Department in want of material evidences to back up their claim they did have the evidences but the chiefs became annoyed the chief said from that day onwards nobody born of a man should ever come to this site to excavate the land because for once they should allow our ancestors to have a peaceful rest so after this stage they take you to the first auction samples that is where our brothers and sisters were sold with things that are really not important things like used clothes tobacco guns gunpowder mirror and what have you and at a point in time even animals were vulnerable as compared to us. Whenever I say this, people say, why do I say that? And I said, everything that is happening to us now, hey, everything that is happening to us now, us is president from the past. But it's because, just because we don't know. So when it's thrown at us, we see it as a new thing. Wherever you're coming from, they have these laws that have been enacted to support the rights of animal, animal rights, animal that you can't even kick your own animal. Ask yourself about us. The protection that animals get, do we even get smallest of it? After the auctioning, that is that you go to the ownership stage. That is where they put a metal in fire, depending on what alphabet your master wanted you to be branded with, and they stab you at your chest, your shoulder. Uh, or your back as a source of identification. Mm. After which, you'll be taken back into your chains and shackles. Going through all this pain, you are still allowed to walk 35 miles to the Cape Coast Dungeons because that was where the slave ship was being done. Mm -hmm. I always say, whatever I have said to you now, it doesn't compare or come closer to what our ancestors went through. If this land could speak if these rivers could speak, if these trees could speak, or even if the spirits could speak to us, I'm not sure we can listen. We'll tell them, please, say no more, because we can't. But as we've come in here, we are now ambassador of change. We are not here to be bitter, because when, we are, because when you are bitter, it is easy for you to be defeated. We are here to be better people because when we are better, there's no way somebody might read our thoughts. So as we have come in here today, we have another journey to make to Kumasi. If there is uh, no question, and the reason why I never took you closer to the river was because it has been stagnant for some time now mm. and your heart is also mine. I, I don't want to, to wreck your heart. If it is flowing, mm -hmm. We have days that it's always flow. So if it's flowing, I'll take you there because I know it's moving. But now, uh, it's, it's, it, may, it may be contaminated for now. So I don't want us to, uh, to, 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 to get closer. So it's good. We, we, can, we can go from here. We can just go to the first uh, okay. so let's, bath as so, if we went down okay, and came So up. Let's, let's, let's use uh, the first bath of and, Let me add something to what my brother is yes, saying. Yes, please. That, uh, um, from where they were captured, Walking through the forest up to this place, this place was a very huge market area. This is the only place that yeah, history says that they were treated well. Why? Because the white man wants so much money from them. So they need to brand them for you to look fresh. That is why they allow them to come and take their bath. So that they will look very fresh, they will look very strong, they exercise. You have nowhere to go. But over here, you allow you to exercise and they give you some amount of 
uh, 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 good food. Let me say that at that time, so that you look very good, strong, so that you can fetch them so much money. Thank you. Okay. So. Time. Yeah, I know. And then we can just take a group photo right here. Yeah. Also, and then we'll take a group photo. Okay, let's 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 go down. For the, for the, for the, no, no, no. Up finish. here. For those who can make it down, I don't want to. Yeah. Because you have to be careful with the stairs. Some of them cannot make it down there. Just um, like others can. So let's go down there. Right, and we're just going to get you a closer view of the river. And then finally this presentation is closed long, but this is all divine details of history. And I've seen this when the water is flowing ridiculously. And now I've seen it where there's no really water flow. Yeah, cool. And once we once we finish up this, we do we do a group photo and then we just roll out. Okay, I go. Please, uh, we do we do have just a minute uh, to spend here because we have uh, a long drive to Kumasi. In here, we do have almost eight rituals that we do, but we don't have time for the rituals today. But we do have time for only one rituals that we do. This is when I'm going to give you I'm going to give you your leave. And you're going to say your wishes on it. I'm going to give you this leaf, and you're going to say your wishes on it. That is the last ritual that we do here. Because we believe that we are here to get something from our ancestors. And a lot of, I have a lot of testimonies, and I'm writing a book on that. And I wish your wishes would come to pass so that you, so that you could add up to the book that I'm writing. You say all your wish on it and you just leave it on the, river, on the water to flow. When you're done, you don't just look, you don't look back, you climb all the way up, and off you go. So, now, I'm going to go to the water. There you go, family. A wish and ascend. Yeah. There you go, family. Our wishes if you, if you want and connection hand, to the ancestors yes, can do that. to empower us. And family, I hope you enjoy our powerful. A Sin Manso last bath, an ancestral river park ceremony and presentation.